It's Thursday, November 18th, and the time for your Barbados Today morning news update. A new offer is on the table for former LIAT employees to be paid. Antigua and Barbados Prime Minister Gaston Brown said his government was now prepared to buy the chattel assets of the airline in order to raise millions of dollars so the former employees could receive part payment of their outstanding severance by Christmas. Emmanuel Joseph reports. In an immediate response to this latest proposal, President of the Leeward Islands Airline Pilots Association, Patterson Thompson, said on Wednesday that the Prime Minister needed to focus his attention on documenting his so-called compassionate pay plan, which was discussed during an October 8th meeting with the union. Prime Minister Brown, who had all along been proposing land and bonds, is cautioning the ex-staff members that whatever money was raised from the purchase of the Liat assets would be deducted from the 50% compassionate pay offer, which she had been mooting for some time now. Meanwhile, the president of the Pilots' Union, Patterson Thompson, has told Barbados today he has not assessed the Prime Minister's new pay plan as yet. However, Thompson suggested that the Antiguan leader might be putting the horse before the cart. I would like the Prime Minister to concentrate on the clarified details that we had on October 8th. If we can get those in writing so that individuals, not only in the Alpha, but other unions, can make a decision on whether they want to accept the, the compassionate bills or not. I think that's the most important thing. I haven't assessed it. His, his statement yet, um, but that's what we want to say right now. I have no really further comment on it. The pilot's spokesman also said his team needs to have a meeting with the other shareholder prime ministers in order to have them share the financial responsibilities of the severance pay. In fact, he said he has already written Prime Minister Motley and is hoping he could have a meeting with her as soon as possible. Emmanuel Joseph for Barbados Today. A social worker is concerned that the expected increased movement of persons during the Yuletide season could hamper the efforts of health authorities to control the spread of COVID-19. Suzette neblet Strong, who is also a counsellor with the Ministry of Health and Wellness, is fearful of a possible spike in cases in the coming weeks. She said the fact that the curfew had also been extended meant residents would have additional time to mingle. As we all know, Bajans love their Christmas and given the fact that there has been a change in curfew hours, um, we have to be concerned about the fact that more persons are going to be on the road and obviously for longer periods. We also have to be concerned about persons, the cultural practice in Barbados is last minute shopping. So this is where you're gonna get the crowds. Um, so that would be one of our biggest concerns from a social worker um, standpoint. We also have to be concerned, um, a lot of children would obviously be out and about. Um, some of these parents back at work, children left on their own. What's happening there? We haven't started the vaccine yet for the under 12s. So that's a concern for us too as a social work group. And also reinfection. I haven't heard that being addressed um, from the medical personnel as yet. Persons going back into households or environments where COVID was. What's happening there in terms of our reinfection numbers? In response, consultant manager of home quarantine and member of the Isolation and Home Quarantine Committee, Dr. Adana Grandison, said that there was no evidence yet in relation to reinfections. Certainly, these would still be very early days to speak about reinfection from the home isolation program. I know that the research is certainly, and this is international research, usually speaks to early reinfection rates as early as 16 weeks. Um, but we do not have any data of such at this point in time. Um, and I, I am not aware of any situations um, that maybe Dr. Ford may have seen from his central isolation program. Half of the people in Latin America and the Caribbean are now fully vaccinated against COVID-19. However, the director of the Pan American Health Organization, Dr. Caricia Etienne, warns that there is no room for complacency as the pandemic is still very active in the region. The Caribbean, the Dominican Republic and Barbados continue to report a steady rise in new infections. The Cayman Islands is experiencing its highest incidence of COVID infections to date, and two-thirds of these cases are among the unvaccinated. 
Meanwhile, Trinidad and Tobago is witnessing a sharp rise in COVID deaths as ICU beds fill with COVID patients. But countries across Central and South America are seeing a decline in new infections, except for Bolivia, which continues to experience rising cases. As Uruguay and Chile have relaxed public health measures, they're also witnessing a spike in COVID cases, even despite their high vaccination coverage. It bears repeating that the COVID pandemic is still very active in our region. As we near the holiday season, we remind everyone that it's up to all of us to keep each other safe by getting vaccinated and following the public health measures that have proven effective against this virus, like social distancing and mask wearing. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. The news from other region now, the Minister of State for the Public Service in the Bahamas, Pierre Glover Roll, announces a hold on hiring as a review gets on the way on persons who were employed on the day of the general election and after. More of that story from our news, Bahamas. There has been engagement into the public service on the day of election and even days after election when the government would have obviously been changed. So those in particular we would be looking at to ensure that the proper methodology of engagement was engaged. State Public Service Minister Pia Glover Roll made the revelation during this week's press briefing at the office of the Prime Minister. She said those hires are up for review to ensure the proper procedure was followed. She also revealed that in the last eight weeks, around 40 individuals on New Providence and the Family Island were hired but are sitting home collecting salaries because there's simply nowhere to place them. And that is why we have to have the audit, ensure that we are filling the gaps and building capacity where it's necessary and not just bringing people on to have a job. But there are a few um, and as a result we have to do what is best for the taxpayer's money and we may have to disengage some of those persons. She also announced that public sector hires have been halted and are expected to resume by July 2022. There's a hold on hiring at this time until we make an analysis based on the audit of where we need to build capacity. We can't just hire and not know where to put people. We have to make sure we're placing people in positions that are available and that are necessary to move the public service forward. And finally, the World Health Organization commemorated a day of action for cervical cancer elimination. It also welcomed groundbreaking new initiatives to end the devastating disease, which claims the lives of over 300,000 women each year. Cervical cancer is the fourth most common cancer among women globally, but it's also almost completely preventable, and if diagnosed early enough, is one of the most successfully treatable cancers. This disease claims the lives of 300,000 women each year, one every two minutes. Like COVID-19, we have the tools to prevent, detect, and treat this disease. Treat this disease. But like COVID-19, cervical cancer is driven by inequitable access to those tools. 79 countries that account for two-thirds of the global burden of cervical cancer are yet to introduce HPV vaccines. 
because of high prices and inadequate supply. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbadistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.